Hey, how's it going? My name is Alex and welcome to Remixed Reviews. Today we're going to be reviewing the movie Age of Ultron, Avengers 2. I'm sure by now most of you have seen it. Uh, if some of you haven't, I will have some spoilers. Uh, I'm not going to break down the movie scene by scene. Um, I think, you know, overall, I think the movie was a success. I wouldn't recommend anyone not to see it. I think you should go check it out. Um, as far as I'm concerned, only because... You know, I'm not a, a, a diehard movie critic. I kind of take things a lot lightly um, when it comes to uh, adaptations, especially with comic books. Uh, so overall, I was happy with uh, Age of Ultron. It missed, from, for me, it missed a little bit of that, I don't know, charm that the first one had. Um, Josh Whedon is very good at storytelling, building up characters, directing them well. I think here they just, uh, they, they fed you with a lot of information, which was good. It was just sometimes going a little too fast. Um, Action-wise, awesome. They start off the movie right away. Most of the trailers that you can see take place within like the first two to three minutes, which is pretty cool. Um, everyone knows by now, or if you don't, the, the origin of Ultron was just uh, changed a little bit from uh, uh, Ant-Man building him to Tony Stark, which actually makes sense in the movie universe. So I didn't have a problem with that. Um, Jarvis kind of technically being part of um, Vision. You know what? If you think about it in the movies, it does make sense. Uh, that's a come stuff like that. Uh, some people, diehard uh, comic book readers might be like, ah, that's bullshit. But I was okay with that. Um, it was, movie had a lot of things setting up for other movies like Panther. They talk about Wakanda a little bit, stuff like that. Uh, it did move fast, which was okay. Uh, it just it lacked a certain something. I'm not sure exactly what it was. I think overall, in my opinion, they didn't seem like they were in that amount of danger as a team. Like, hey, once we get our shit together, we'll be able to fix the problem. We'll be able to defeat them. I mean, Ultron is just, from what I understand, you know, men that seem powerful. They all need to get together to beat them. And it just seemed like, you know, he was badass. Uh... David Spader, I believe his name is, from The Blacklist. I think his voice, his style of uh, talking fit Ultron very well. I just felt he wasn't dominant enough, menacing enough, where um, against the Avengers themselves individually. Like, you know, it didn't seem like they were like, fuck, we can't beat them. There's no way out. I think adding a little more of that sense, I mean, they did do it, but not at the sense where, like, shit, this guy's badass and they're not going to be able to beat him at all. If they had that little element, I think I would have liked it a little better. But, like, overall, it didn't miss the mark uh, totally on anything, unlike a lot of DC movies do with uh, from either what the hell they're wearing or what type of character they should have been or trying to relate it to new uh, modern-day times or the way we think. Uh, that's the biggest problem with comic book movies. Um, you stay true to the character, you could still fit them into a modern time. You just, you know, sometimes they try to lose a bit of that character's uh, either point of view or the way he is or she is to try to fit them in now and it just that's where you kind of lose it uh, but the Avengers uh, it was good um, Vision was great Ultron was overall good the story wasn't bad um, it still had that Chintari type you know mindless drone type thing I would have preferred if there were less Ultron maybe there was like 10 or 15 but they were harder to beat you know, if like Ultron's mind was in them a little bit more or they were just a bigger, harder opponent. Um, it's cool watching Hulk and all of them tear through them up real easy like they did in the first movie with the Chintari. But overall, I think I would have preferred more of a challenge for them. Uh, I could be nitpicking. Um, that's what we do as critics. Um, shit, but I'm not going to say the movie sucked. No, by any means, it didn't suck. It was good. It was fun. Um... I like the fact that a lot of the trailer, like I said, was in the beginning. So I kind of, you know, even though I know they kind of knew this, what was the story or where they were heading, what direction, it was still kind of interesting to see, oh shit, what's next. Um, the twins were good. Um, Scarlet Witch in particular, I liked her character. Uh, she's actually hotter than the, her two sister, the Olsen twins. So that yeah, was good though, overall. Um, the whole Hulk and Black Widow calming them down, I... I kind of back and forth with that. I don't like the fact that either either you can control the Hulk, like you kind of showed you could in the first one, or you can't. I don't like how they keep going back and forth. I understand how she could calm him down faster. I get it. But I 
I could have done without it, to be honest with you. Um, I don't know if they're going to continue it. At the end of the movie, they show Hulk on a ship. Obviously, he could fucking fly the ship, and he knows that he's not going back to her. So he can't control to a point. So I didn't understand what they were trying to do there. I think they were just trying to add a love scene or a twist just to show something different or something new. I don't know if that's their plan for future movies. Or they're going to have her wrap around back to Captain America and hook up with him like she, she normally does. But uh, other than that, you know, I liked it. Another thing that was um, kind of threw me off was the the helicarrier, Nick Fury, coming out of nowhere. Um, I don't watch Agents Marvel, uh, Marvel Shield, the show or whatever. Uh, they said there was a small tie-in there, but even people who watched that couldn't kind of tell me it was a direct tie-in. Like, uh, I expected maybe some of those cast members to be on the carrier. They weren't. Um, I was kind of confused. Is fucking S.H.I.E.L.D. up? Are they back? Are they not back? At the end, they show a private base where Captain America's back, and it says Marvel's Avengers base. So, are they not S.H.I.E.L.D.? Like, I, shit like that. Like, I'm not fucking a comic book expert, so I didn't kind of was like, well, what's going on? They do show, at the very end, once it's all said and done, um... Captain America has his, like, you know, he has a war machine, a vision, Scarlet Witch, Black Widow himself, and, um, who's, it? oh, Falcon. So, I'm assuming that's his team when they break up into the fight or whatever, or was it Civil War, however they're going to do that, or, I think they're doing Civil War, Infinity War, but I guess that's his team, um, which kind of makes sense, because if you think of all those characters, they're all that type of, they have the same type of, uh, morale the same type of thinking you know so was, i'm kind of interested to see where they go with that war machine does make a a nice cameo in there i felt that falcon could have came out with him and one scene that he jumps off the uh, carrier to help uh, the rest of the avengers you know i could have thrown falcon in there you know have some brothers come out with samuel walking the fucking uh the top of the aircraft carrier like you know sound cool that shit would have been cool uh, but they just had him in the background like a filler but hey you know i'm sure uh, he was a good character falcon so i'm sure They'll use them better in uh, Captain America 3 and Avengers 3. Um, but yeah, man, uh, I, I don't know if you would consider it nitpicking. I'm just picking out some points because everyone I talked to, they said it's a flawless fucking movie. Uh, I didn't think it was flawless. I mean, was it good? Yeah. Uh, did it disappoint me? No, not really. I, I enjoyed most of it. But there were certain things, you know, like kind of like in Avengers 1, the whole Chitar just falling out. Quick ending, make it snappy. Um, Age of Ultron, uh, the way they get them at the end, uh, it's Iron Man, Thor, and Vision all shooting their fucking Iron Man. It's, uh, shooting his beam, so is the Vision from the Infinity Stone. And then you got, uh, Thor with the lightning. That was a cool shot. You know, they don't get the last one. Vision actually destroys the very last drone or, or a part of, um, um, Ultron. But, um, that was good. It, it didn't leave me, like, dumbfounded or I was like, what the fuck? So... If you guys haven't seen the movie, I would definitely recommend it. Um, like I said, it, it's it's the Avengers, so with that many characters and with those many people who already kind of have a good layout, I knew it wasn't going to be horrible. Uh, there was just some things that could have been different, but you know, I don't know what direction they're going. And to be honest with you, you can't miss one of these movies because they're all connected to some way. So, you know, they get a little leeway there. Um, I recommend it if you haven't seen it. I don't think anyone watching this fucking video is not going to see it eventually. So that's my take on it. The movie was good. It had some flaws. But overall, I definitely recommend it. Um, like I said, I don't know who else not going to watch it. But there might be a few guys out there waiting till later or waiting till it gets out of the show or the theater. Or watching it on bootleg. And you know what? If you guys do got it on bootleg, it doesn't do justice. That's something you definitely need to see on the big screen, on IMAX. Uh, pay the money because it's just not worth watching it. Uh, you know, you got to see the colors. You got to see the great... Uh, I mean, visually, the movie is awesome. I mean, it's cool. And I haven't seen it on 3D, but after watching it, I I probably am going to go catch it on the IMAX 3D because I think I think there's enough shots, aerial shots, and they do have a, a, most of the ending the scene is in the sky where I think, trying to think about it, it probably does have a nice little extra oomph as far as uh, visuals go. Uh, so... You know, that's my review. I hope you guys liked it. Please leave your comments at the bottom. Uh, for any uh, future videos, all the interviews we did for C2E2, please visit us at www.comicremix.com and also on YouTube or on Instagram and Twitter. And we will see you next time. Peace. I cannot stay here too long before my machine friends will become nervous and do something rash.